Hey, everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone, and welcome home. You, right now, are either watching, listening to, or reading something called Tech for Everyone. Tech for Everyone, let's just call it a roundup of, of recent news that I want to highlight, and personal ramblings and, and whatever else is currently occupying all this brain matter that's reserved for for tech and music and gaming. And it's also a newsletter that you can get by going to techforeveryone.net. So hit that up. Also, you can hit up l4estore.com. So here's a list of stuff that I want you to know about. My new collaboration with Nick from the Linux Experiment is live. It's a Linux first, but not Linux exclusive, video channel and podcast, celebrating video games, the people playing them, and the developers making them for the people playing them who are talking about them. I'm biased, but I think you'll really enjoy the attitude of the show and the topics that we have. And there's a few ways that you can get games for everyone. You can subscribe on YouTube, you can subscribe on Odyssey, and you can get the audio podcast at gamesforeveryone.fireside.fm. And yes, we have a Discord and it's awesome. If you want to chat Windows, mobile, cloud, or Linux gaming, Join the community there. I'll have a link in the description for you guys to click on. And uh, sorry, there isn't quite enough demand for a Mac OS gaming channel just yet. Speaking of Nick, Linux has found itself under a larger and more critical spotlight lately, thanks in equal parts to the Linux Daily Driver Challenge that's underway over at Linus Tech Tips. And I think we should have a part five where we okay. actually get like uh, like a crew of Linux evangelists, we pull in, we get, we grab Anthony, we pull in Wendell from Level One Techs, we pull in like Jason Evangelo, yeah. someone like yeah, that, yeah. right? And the tragically delayed Steam Deck from Valve. And that means people are talking about two always hot topics right now, the fragmentation of desktop Linux and the need for Linux apps. Now, those two things don't exactly blend together like peanut butter and jelly. In his latest video, Nick addresses both of these subjects with persuasive logic, a touch of humor, and a somewhat happy and hopeful ending. In a nutshell, the argument is that Linux itself is not and cannot be a platform. But desktop Linux distributions have several emerging, yet still incomplete, platforms. Nick argues that the only fully developed platform on Linux right now... Oh, he's going to talk about elementary OS again. ...is elementary OS and its app center for everyone. And personally, I hope that both of these continue to gain more mindshare and more public support because I do love what they're doing. Anyway, check out Nick's video for the full story. Link is in the description. In addition to Tuxedo Computers and our friends in the community, Linux for Everyone is also made possible by Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have multiple distros available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and Arch, by the way. They've got multiple server plans to make any app or service flexible and easily scalable. You can use a Linode server to easily set up a WordPress-powered website, your own personal VPN, a dedicated Jitsi or Minecraft server, and much more that you can get installed with a single click. Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size, so you can get help from a real person when you need it. Right now, Linux for Everyone fans who are opening a brand new account can get a $100 60-day credit by going to linode.com slash Linux for Everyone. Linode's been doing cloud computing since 2003, before Amazon even entered the picture. So they're not trying to take over the retail world like other companies. They're just focused on good old fashioned, Linux loving cloud computing. Go to linode.com slash Linux for everyone to get started building your new project. It's where we host all of ours and we're proud to call them a longtime partner. And speaking of Steam Deck, after Epic Games announced full Linux support for its easy anti-cheat, which was followed immediately by a Battleize nod of support, I had a little fireside chat titled My Top Three Hopes and Two Big Fears for Steam Deck, in which I praised the awesomeness of AMD's FSR technology and how effective it could be with the deck especially when it's docked. FSR is basically an upscaling feature that makes your in-game images look substantially better and sharper 
at lower resolutions. So your GPU, whether that's Radeon or GeForce, doesn't have to work as hard to give you higher frame rates with smoother gameplay. As you'd imagine, this scenario is pretty appealing for people on older hardware, or consoles like the deck that are a little bit underpowered, at least compared to your beefy, dedicated graphics card. And the really cool thing about FSR is that if you're running Linux, you can enable it on almost every game in your Steam library. That is why I'm ridiculously excited seeing AMD confirm that not only will FSR work on Valve's little super console PC thing, but the deck will natively support FSR at an operating system level in a future update. That means SteamOS, the Arch-based distro Valve designed for the deck, will have FSR baked right in. And since we'll be able to download and install SteamOS on any PC, guess what? Linux gaming just got even easier across the board. No command line wizardry or launch command voodoo will be required. YouTube dislikes all of your disliking. Intel probably did too. YouTube is starting to hide the number of dislikes on videos, and there's certainly a logical explanation and tons of research and behavior analysis behind that decision, right? Maybe it will prevent targeted harassment, like the kind of review bombing that we often see on Metacritic and Steam. I just have one take. Have you ever searched YouTube for a guide or a tutorial and stumbled upon a video that has a completely lopsided like to dislike ratio? And did you watch that video and think, nope, that wasn't helpful at all. It might have even been completely inaccurate and plain awful. Seeing that ratio is meaningful. It's meaningful in the same way that upvotes and downvotes are normally supposed to be meaningful on Reddit. It typically helps us save time, filter out the noise, and watch something that matters with the limited time that we have. I'm curious what you think about this, so leave a comment or send an email over to Linux for everyone at pm.me. In the meantime, I'll just leave this tweet right here. All right, time for a quick app pick, and it's time to skip the CLI and embrace the GUI. You might know about Proton GE, the custom version of Valve's compatibility layer that helps Windows games get played on Linux. It's a massive, ever-growing ingredient in the delicious Steam Deck meal, by the way. So this custom version usually incorporates a bunch of fixes from Valve and Code Weavers and various developers, and it gets them out the door ASAP. This is how I've been able to play the newly released Forza Horizon 5 on my Fedora 35 testing rig. It's essentially what you want to play the newest games as quickly as humanly possible on Linux. My friend Nasif developed a really cool command line based utility to install Proton GE called Proton Up, and I made a video about that, which you, a lot of you saw. Well, I need to make another video because a developer by the name of Davido Tech built a GUI for it. A GUI. This is awesome because Proton GE just got a lot easier for us newbies and normies who prefer to take action with our mouse and not by typing things. Better still, his version lets you install Wine GE for Lutris. Speaking of Forza Horizon 5, I've been playing a lot of that game and uh, I noticed once I got into the character creator that COVID life continues to seep its way into our games, doesn't it? Here's my character in Forza Horizon 5 choosing just the right face mask for partying with the festival goers over there in virtual Mexico. Other games that have added face masks to their character creators are Animal Crossing, Watchdog Legion, and Pokemon Go. If you know of any others, let me know in the comments. Diddly -doo, diddly -doo, diddly -doo. So that's tech for everyone. It's, it's a bit of an experiment, and in a perfect world, I would write this newsletter and send it out, and then the script will be used for a short standalone video and maybe even a, a standalone podcast. I'm not exactly sure where all this stuff would live yet, but you can get the newsletter at techforeveryone.net. And for now, you can get the video newsletter right here where you're watching this video. As always, my, my Linux journey is constantly evolving and changing, and so is my journey as a content creator. So let me know what you guys think. And until we chat again, take care and take care of each other.